Maybe you're familiar with this situation. You read a text, maybe it's a printed text, or maybe it's on the computer screen, and you start to lose the line. You have to highlight the text, or use your finger and track the line there, just not to read the same line all over again. And you think, is it my fault? You're having doubts about your life, about every decision you made. Whose fault is this? It's bad typography's fault, it's not your fault. And this video is about how to avoid that. It's about line length and line height for reading text, basically. I'm going to show you a practical example for web design and what to think about and go into some details there. Ready to get started? Then welcome to a new episode of Pimp My Type. Hello and welcome typography enthusiasts. My name is Oliver Schoendorfer, user interface designer and typographer, helping you on this channel to improve your website or app design with some pimped typography. We talked about font size in the previous video. I linked it in the show notes below so you can check it out there. Together with font size, line length and line height form the holy trinity of typography. Always think about this. Line length and line height. In typographic terms, line length is called measure, how many characters are in one line, and line height is called leading. In ancient times when we set text in metal, we put physically lead in between these rows of text and this created the term of leading. You should always consider making your text easy and pleasant to read. And I'm going to show you a practical example right now here. Take a look at this body text here. It's set in a great typeface. It's in Reader Serif, one of the suggestions on the Pink My Type newsletter. Subscribe to it to get a weekly font recommendation right to your inbox. Link in the description below. In Reader looks great. You can pick the most beautiful, suited, typeface for your project and still mess it up when not setting it properly. So, and here you can see this doesn't look inviting to read. I don't want to read it. It's too much. It's too dense. It's bleh, bleh. The, the biggest problem here is that the lines get too long. You have to make, you have to restrain them. And there's one rule or rule, one guideline, I'd say. The ideal line length is about 60 to 80 characters long. What does this mean? This is something we're familiar with, maybe from printed books or something. It's a way that your eye can travel across one line and it's not too long, then move on to the next line. The first step when I'm setting my text here is I'm going to introduce a max width for my body text here and I just apply this to the body right now as a container. And how do I know what 60 or 80 characters look like or what might be best there? I'm going for relative units, uh, in, in this case RAMs, and one RAM is slightly two characters. So if I say 60 to 80 characters, let's use 30 to 32 um, RAMs. This then might be 64 characters or so. 32 RAM. Okay, and what I'm looking for now, this looks better. The line is, yeah, the lines are not that long. I want to have a nice even typographic color on the edges here. So if it's, uh, if I set it from left to right, of course, in, in Western typography. And this nice typographic color I achieve with just fiddling around some numbers, checking out, is it 33? No, ah, you see it bumps out here too much, or is it maybe 31? Mm -hmm. I think 32 was just ideal, yeah. So it's a nice even color to one side, to the left aligned text. This is now a nice line length, but line length and line height always cor correlate. This means when I adjust the line length, I also have to adjust the line height. The longer the text, the longer the lines, the larger the line height has to be. If I'm adding from a paragraph element now, here the line height to, let's say, 1.6. Ah, 
Now we have some air to breathe. This looks much better. The default size is about 1.3 from your browser. So this is a bit too dense for um, a full width column of, of body text. So you can find out what's best here by just changing the numbers. And maybe it's 1.5. Ah, 1.5 might be sufficient, maybe, even. So the goal is that it's easy to read. The lines have to be... Um, it shouldn't be, like, for example, here. If I set it to two, it's too loose again. It's not that even typographic color. It always depends on the typeface, of course, because first of all, you have to pick your typeface. So what looks good now for my body text on a desktop device looks a bit different on a mobile screen. If I squish it together, let's say to 320 or 370 pixels. Hmm. I'm not sure. We were at 1.6. I'm not sure. It, it's okay. It's okay-ish. But if the column is narrower, you also can decrease your font size. Maybe it's 1.4 or something like this. So you can make it a bit denser because your eyes won't, uh, won't travel the long distance here from this world to that world and so on. So you can make it a bit more compact. Just remember this, 1.3 or the default. Ah, this is too dense again. You see, this is the default, it's too dense. And if I add it again with 1.4, it can breathe now. You can add a media query at a certain breakpoint and then just bump up the um, line height. You can also calculate this with viewport units and so on. I want to keep it simple and just show you what you should look for and not for the perfect system right now, but just what your eyes tell you when you, when you look at it. This is a bit looser, it's not too dense, but if I maybe use 1.6 here, ah, it's almost too much, but for full width, it might be okay. So just, just that you see these differences. And now let's add some headings in there, because this is also interesting how the line height behaves there. It looks okay for my desktop design. Looks okay. But once I see it on a mobile device, again, 370 pixels or something like this, um, you see it becomes pretty loose. Basically, we should decrease the font size for the H1 heading, but I won't do that right now. But you can always reduce the line height for your headings. So your headings are shorter, so you can make them more compact here. The line height then would be 1.2 or something. Let's see what this looks like, or 1.1. And for the H2 heading, it also could be a bit more compact. Maybe also 1.1. And for the heading, maybe 1 even. It always, uh, you know when it's too little, when things start collapsing, when almost the A sender and the D sender meets and then it gets too tight. But in this case, one still works. So maybe 1.05 or something might be a good measure meant for the line height here. So my goal is always to make it as compact as possible for the heading, but as loose as necessary because the font size of the heading is larger anyway. So remember this, the longer the lines, the larger the line height, the shorter the lines, the smaller the line height. You can use, if you don't want to use breakpoints or something, go for 1.5, look at your typeface and go for 1.5. Maybe this will more or less work in most situations. It might be a bit too much for mobile. It might be a bit too uh, little for desktop resolutions, for your full column width, but it's better than using the defaults of 1.3. And if you can adjust it, you can also make it dynamic and increase it and get your head or wrap your head around this stuff. I hope this video was helpful to you and if you liked it, 
Tell me your questions or ideas in the comments below. Also, don't forget to hit the like button and that red button that says in terribly spaced all caps letters. Subscribe and see you next time. And this video... This video...